guys. Welcome back to Wookiees on X-Wing. My name is Matt. And I'm John. And today we've got a special uh, review for you here. We've got some of the new Wave 9 ships. I will be flying the, uh, well, it was basically the Shadowcasters, the Lancer class, and John will be demonstrating the ARC-170. Well, I am very excited to finally be playing the ARC-170 ever since this game has come out. One of the few ships that I've always kind of regretted not being part of the Galactic Civil War was the ARC-170, but we found a way to weasel it in, and now I get to play it, so I'm pretty excited for that. Just ripped it out of the box, never even played it before, just going to go right at it, and so I have Nora Wexley, and she's she has pushed the limit, R2-D2, Kyle Katarn, and the Alliance Overhaul. Now, Nora's special ability is that when attacking or defending, you may spend a target lock you have on the enemy ship to add one focus result to the roll. So combine that with Kyle Katarn, you can get some focus there, get your target lock. I also have Shara Bay. When another friendly ship at range 1 to 2 is attacking, it may treat your target lock tokens as its own. And I put the Adre Adrenaline Rush EPT on it for one point. The R5K6, which is not very known because it came in the tentative box, I believe. It is, after spending your target lock, roll one defense dice. On a evade result, immediately acquire a target lock on the same ship. You cannot spend this target lock during this attack. And then on top of that, there's a weapons engineer, so I can get two target locks, a lot of target lock shenanigans there. And then, of course, for the front man is Biggs Darklighter. We all know him. Wave 1 ship. Very, very fun when it comes to a Rebel Squadron. He's just going down now. And he has the R3 Astromech, which came out in the ARC-170 box. It's once per round when attacking with a primary weapon. You may cancel one of your focus results during the modify attack dice step to assign one evade token to your ship, adding a little bit more durability to bigs than we normally see, but, uh, you know, you normally have the R2-F2 or stealth device, very mm -hmm. cheap there. Internal ast uh, integrated astromech on him to make him a little bit more durable as well. Matt, what are you bringing to the table? Well, so I'm Flying Scum here. Uh, some of the ships will recognize that little cluster of three down the bottom. There's two Binary Pirates, and they're actually running the Black Market Slicer Tools. This is something that uh, came in the Lancer class. It's a, an illicit, and as an action, choose a stressed enemy ship, range 1 to 2, and roll 1 attack dice. On a hit or crit, remove that stress token, and deal it 1 face down damage card. So, not too bad. Pretty cheap upgrade, pretty cheap little ships. Kind of annoying. And then we've got the uh, well, unhinged TLT Y-Wing there. So, all he's got is just the turret and the unhinged astromech. Again, cheap, but utilitarian. And then, uh, I'm a big fan of the Clone Wars. When I saw Asajj Ventress is a pilot, it's like, okay, yep, we're playing her. So she is flying in the Lancer class. Now her pilot ability is at the start of the combat phase. You may choose a ship at range 1 to 2. If it's inside your mobile fire arc, assign one stress token to it. So get some use out of the uh, slicer tools there. And she's running a full loadout with push the limit, uh, gyroscopic targeting, Ketsu Onyu, the Shadowcaster title, and then two illicits, inertial dampeners and glitter stims. So the gyroscopic targeting, it's a unique modification for the ship. At the end of the combat phase, if you executed a 3, 4, or 5 maneuver, you can rotate your fire, mobile firing arc for free. And then Ketsu is a unique, is a uh, new crewman here, scum only. At the start of the end phase, you may choose one enemy ship inside your firing arc at range 1 to 2. That ship does not remove its tractor beam tokens. And this synergizes beautifully with the Shadowcaster title of after you perform an attack that hits, if the defender is inside your mobile arc and at range 1 to 2, you may assign a tractor beam token to it. When you say synergy, you mean it. A lot of eternal synergy there, mm -hmm. and it plays really into how you want to fly this ship. The interesting thing about it it's, is more than anything else besides the fact that it can tractor beam and do all of this other crazy stuff. It is the, the mobile firing arc yeah. that is really crazy. It can do it as an action, but with that gyroscopic doodad. <laughs> with the, yeah, the gyroscopic targeting there, and it's that really plays into how the ship wants to play. All of its three maneuvers, it has the full set, they're all greens. And it's four forward is green, it's two forward is also green, but this ship really wants to be going quite quickly. Just hammering it around the board and moving that fire arc for free. Mm -hmm. It's a surprisingly maneuverable uh, large ship. 
So getting into the quick and dirty with the debris and asteroids. By debris, I mean no debris, all asteroids all the time, forever. And we have a couple of big rocks, classic set. Matt just pulled out the rocks. I said, okay, Matt, we'll use your rocks. Let's <laughs> go not? for it. I can't find mine, or maybe I could. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, here we have them down, and I'm flying relative tight formation. I haven't played Rebels in a long time. I don't. Rem I think the last time I played Rebels, especially on Wookiees on X-Wing, was when Dash came out. Yeah. So this is a very long time since I've played Rebels. I might have played with my, my X-Wing, X-Wing, B-Wing a while back, but that was over a year ago. Uh, you have an interesting squadron. You've had some practice when you had that Zyzor or Shizor list mm -hmm. a while back, so you really know what you're doing with them. So I, I want to see how this plays out. I'm coming right for you in the middle. I want to use the flexibility of my arcs mm -hmm. to to counteract your just shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans all over the place. I'm kind of terrified of your your big ship, the Lancer class, because of your ability to just stress me out. I have some ways of mitigating that with Kyle Katarn on uh, Nora, mm -hmm. but Bay is kind of the, the key to my action economy. Luckily, you have to deal with bigs first. Absolutely, yep. So you have to deal with Mr. Pornstash in order to be <laughs> able to deal with the rest of my squadron. I'm going to try to use that to my, mm -hmm. my advantage. What is your strategy going in, Matt? Well, Starting from the deployment is, again, kind of pulling from that uh, Shizor experience of having the, well, what's essentially the chaff, the two binaries, uh, parallel to myself, and kind of escorting in the TLT into position. And then, as we saw here, saying, all right, they're going to go up, I'm going to break them into the asteroids, and basically use them as speed bumps. Now, still getting, uh, haven't played a large ship in a, a little bit, so getting kind of used to just the sheer size of that base, but... I figured with this Lancer, with its maneuver dial, it's got enough room to kind of bomb it around in that opening between the asteroids. Mm -hmm. And if I can get a tractor beam off and pull somebody onto an asteroid, hey, that's great. That's exactly what I want to do. It looks like I'm going to be using the that one little asteroid to for my defense. Mm -hmm. I want to just get some kind of defensive measure in there so that when you blast Biggs, he can survive a little bit longer. Yeah. At this range, speculative shots means range three through an asteroid. That's going to give Biggs a, an astonishing four defense dice, and you have to fire at him first. Mm -hmm. Bay is flying up, getting that, those target locks on. Now, there was a couple of uh, points as we were going into Wave 9, maybe some things that are going to be addressed in the FAQ about how target locks on Bay will count towards being used by other people, mm -hmm. uh, how when you acquire a target lock via shenanigans from the droid, if weapons engineer is going to allow you to target lock multiple players, there is a precedent for that, as you d you had told me in the FAQ, what would that be? So the precedent for that is, with fire control system, all it's, you know, it stipulates you have to acquire your first target lock on the ship you shot at, and then you're free to do whatever. We, we figure that, you know, okay, the logical extension to that is you have to use the first target lock from the droid and then your weapons engineer says you can grab it on someone else. That's we played it out. It made sense to us. We'll see if it stays that way, but it didn't really seem broken or anything when we ran it. We're also under the assumption that when somebody else uses Bay's target lock, Bay still counts as, as that target lock being spent for the purpose of the droid. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of a mix match there. So if you have some clean cut answers for us, please leave those in the comment section below so we can read over them. We spend so much time making these videos and uh, commentating on them. We actually don't have a lot of time to play games ourselves. So this is a bit of a, a rusty match for both of us. Luckily, we have a uh, Friday coming up. Mm -hmm. That's just completely off. We're going to get a billion games in for the rest of uh, Wave 9. Should be fun. So here we've got the opening salvo going out. So this is Nora. The highest pilot skill of seven. And this is the one thing that, one of the things that really surprised me about the arc is you look at its core stats, it's like, okay, two attack dice, one defense, okay, this is an old ship. Well, then you have the free Alliance Overhaul title, and suddenly your forward fire arc is always at least three dice. And if you're shooting someone behind you, you can change one of your focus, focus results to a crit. So that ship really starts punching above its, uh, what the core stats on this card say it can do. Yeah. So there I add a focus result. Now, Matt's just off camera on the phone. 
but he's still watching. Yeah. And I use the, I add a focus result from uh, Nora's ability, mm -hmm. but also using the target lock off of Bay, and ro rolling an evade result, meaning that I reacquire my target lock. Yeah. So I'm getting a tremendous, I'm go going from two attack dice to three attack dice because I will immediately spend that focus to turn that focus to mm -hmm. a hit. Now it was really impressive when base uh, when um, Nora is firing out of her back because of the alliance overhaul. She automatically changes a focus to a crit result, so you can have a tremendous amount of pow firepower going in that way as well. Yeah. Now I pushed myself a little bit here when I with the push the limit and stress, and one of the things, and, and I'm trying to get that. Kyle Katarn proc, setting that up for later turns, not really thinking about the future of you got some slicer tools <laughs> coming my way, so we'll see how that plays out in the future. Yeah, and so we yeah, took I took one uh, hit on my binary. Visage is taking a range three through a rock into Biggs. Doesn't do anything. Like, All right, you know what? She has a shot. There's no uh, there's literally no downside to to shooting there. Get the uh, get the shot out. Yeah. And then we've got uh, we've got Shara shooting back. And again, you've really uh, well. The binary pirates are the leading ships, and strange enough, they are one of the more dangerous options right now. Especially, they're going to be up in your face, um, and they want to be going after those stressed ships. And we all know headhunters are kind of easy to kill. Yeah. So if we can get as much damage out onto them early, then that'll help help uh, tone back their threat. So I've already done a, trim, a pretty impressive amount of damage at long range to mm -hmm. one of your yeah, Z95 uh, headhunters. His shields are down. There is... And he's down to haul now. And, he, and he'll be... Uh, also, he'll at least have a chance to return fire. Hopefully. I, yeah, he, that's the thing. With low <laughs> pilot seal ships, you never know. But because of slicer tools at, being in the activation phase... Mm -hmm. That opens up a lot of potential when it comes to damage because I mean Z95s for the most part their actions are pretty petty. Yeah. Being able to just get the, that damage right through shields, mm -hmm. something like Dangar who has a billion stress and he, he's always going to have stress. Yeah. That can really put the the stress on Dangar. Yeah. And that's that's part of the reason I put the the slicer tools on, well, just the binary pirates is. They're probably going to be going first. Yeah, it's an action, but all right, so it means they don't get to focus or target lock. It's not that big a deal. But you've got a 50-50 chance of just dealing a damage straight through onto the ship, mm -hmm. which is not something you can say about a headhunter very often. And if there's a couple of them, that's a pretty reasonable threat, and you're still forcing your opponent to dedicate you know, their time and effort to killing what's essentially a 13-point ship. Yeah. So the rest of the speculative shots basically amounted to not much. Not much. <laughs> the pirates, uh, they missed. Not terribly surprising, but not what they're here for. This is what they're here for. So here is the slicer tools going out onto, uh, onto Nora. So I get a damaging result and deals a, uh, deals a damage card straight through onto her. And that's really frustrating because I spent four points for R2-D2 and I can't even, you know... Mm -hmm. Now, deal with that. It does remove the stress, so it will give you a focus from Kyle. Unavoidable, uh, for me, an unavoidable downside, but I will trade a stress token for a point of damage on a ship with that with six hull. That is, a, that is not a trade I mind making. And he's still kind of, uh, he's kind of in the way. Don't want to go too fast. They're unlikely to bump him here. I was... When I was setting this up, I was very strongly considering having him go a four forward, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure where that would land him and if he could mm -hmm. end up with a firing arc on something. But ended up uh, accidentally bumping into the back of with the other pirate. Just makes me glad that the first one, Slicer Tools, actually landed. Yeah, I am not a big fan of that. <laughs> you, your, your big smelly jerk face. I. Figured that you were going to come and block me here mm -hmm. with your Z95s, so I wanted to put put on the gas a little bit. Yeah, and here's where the four maneuver would have benefited me a little more. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but we both know we both know what binary pirates do. We know what their purpose is. Yeah. So I'm still not exactly sure the the Lancer's 
uh, mm -hmm. capabilities at this point, where it's going to go. So I'm playing fairly defensively with my ARC 170s. I'm trying to leverage the fact that they have the that rear firing arc, but at the mm -hmm. same time, I completely screwed up my order of operations, and here I am bumping myself, so we're hopefully getting these bumps out of the way early yeah. on in the game. Yeah, and that's the one thing, I, one of the things I do like about the game, and it really is like riding a bicycle. It takes a bit of practice, then you're right back in it. So, unfortunately, bumping with, with Bay is not the greatest <laughs> fighter to bump with on my side because I really want to get those target locks on. Yeah. And so we see here, uh, it was, ended up being caught, but the uh, last turn, the mobile fire arc for the Lancer was facing forward, so at the end of the combat phase, because she did a three turn, and I turned it to the left quadrant knowing that, all right, I'm probably going to bank right. Let's try to side strafe your squadron. So she only does a two and very narrowly lands in front of, uh, in front of her uh, syndicate thug there. Yeah. But in a really nice spot, the f mobile fire arc is in the direction I want it to be. She's looking right at Biggs. And here, here the size of her base kind of benefits me because it's going to end up that that asteroid is not actually between the closest points. And, and, then, and here I am. Actually, I figured that you were going to do a 4 forward with, mm. uh, with your headhunters, so I'm actually banking away from you in order to try to get the rear firing arc. Unfortunately, you did not move as fast <laughs> as, I intend, as I wanted you to, so... It's going to be close if that's in. Looks to us... Just looking at it, it looked good, but I was like, all right, let's 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 play it out. So I'm not exactly sure where what, where or what Nora's is going to do, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of afraid to stress <laughs> her out right now because if I stress her out, then I could easily take another point of damage, and while that might not seem like a lot right on a sh ship that has six hull, mm -hmm. that's still damage that I'm giving away. Absolutely. And we see... It's a little hard with uh, to see with Asajj there, but she for her action she target locked Biggs and pushed to focus, and yeah, the one one part I really enjoyed about flying the Lancer is all of those three maneuvers being green. Mm. It really it's not that limiting to you in you know if you need to push well what uh, what kind of maneuvers are you gonna be locked into? Yeah, and so here so this is the the rear fire arc did have my forward most uh, pirate in arc. Clips the side of them there. Spend your target lock to add the focus. And which your rear gunner will immediately turn to a crit and then spend your one of two focus tokens. And he did. <laughs> I ended up rolling two focus results, so had the slicer tools not been in action, he would have survived. But in the grand scheme of things, I really don't mind giving up the pirate to, well, kind of be annoying here. Yep. And there's a direct hit coming out of my deck, so let's get rid of that now. <laughs> <laughs> but he did his job. To me, I got I got my 13 points use out of him. Oh, absolutely. Now I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to go with my other ships as I'm as the barrage of attacks come my way. Yeah, so next we're, we're going to have Asajj firing. So she has to fire against Biggs, but he's actually the one I want to shoot. Oh, and we had a slight... Little jump the gun a little bit there with Nora. So with her pirate pilot ability going out, uh, she chose to stress Biggs out. So I'm not sure if I can kill him this turn, but I'm going to try. So we've got range one. This is four attacks. Spend my target lock. Three. And with three hits and not obstructed, that will be. Well, he's going to get hit anyway. So now it's just a matter of how much damage does he take. Spends his focus and loses his shields. And now we see the Shadowcaster title coming into effect. And I am just going to yank big sideways uh, onto that asteroid. And oh. it is no longer obstructing my TLT's view of him. And his agility is now dropped by one because he has a target he has a tractor beam token on him. And then on top of that, I'm on a rock. <laughs> and he takes a damage from the And rock. I take a damage. And I can't shoot this turn. It's not Christmas for Biggs. <laughs> no, and it was and I think, to me, this turn is really exemplifies the kind of play style that the Lancer is going to have. Of the just, I'm going to get within range one to two of you and just yank your little ships around the board. 
Oh yes, for sure. Especially when it's such a key player like Biggs, where mm -hmm. you really want to keep him close so that your other ships can't get shot at. But on top of that, being able to have that high pilot skill, tractor beam just going off, mm -hmm. adding all of this sort of weird, scummy synergy going on, it really is kind of disconcerting. Yeah. And so there was Nora. She was a... Uh, or sorry, Shara. Did end up clipping uh, Asajj on the corner, but not really enough damage to go through. Spent my focus to mitigate it. Mm -hmm. and there is the... Uh, my Y-Wing, he is going to just land a shot into Biggs. And again, with the... Uh... So, the first one does a point, and then we remember here, wait a minute, there's a tractor beam. I rolled two hits, Biggs has one agility. He literally can't defend against that. Yeah. So that is going to be... Uh... Since he only had the one hull left, that damage card is going to go on to the integrated astromech. Now that discards both that and the droid. But, uh... So I haven't gotten a chance to actually <laughs> use my droid, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, on Biggs, he's going to be the center of attention. And I don't actually have any more ships that can shoot at Biggs, so... I'm going to have my little pirate there take a shot into Shara. Because she is not actioned. Oh, and I guess I don't have arc, so... It isn't an aura after all. And he misses. <laughs> Which I'm totally okay with. That or one point of damage I'm happy with because mm -hmm. then I could regenerate it with R2-D2. So when it comes to speculative shots at Nora with goons, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sweating. Yeah. And so there is the slicer tools. Gets the point through and actually blows big up on the rock with, uh, with the slicer tools. So Absolutely that, that, <laughs> that one point upgrade really making its value known. And we saw there the, the tractor beam token remaining on Biggs. And again, that's from, from Ketsu there. And that that crewman, for me, man, he gets work done. I gotta have the, the Y Wing do his thing. Try to uh he's actually trying to turn over the Shadow Caster. Yeah, not, not an easy <laughs> feat to, to get a Y-Wing maneuvered around a big ship. They just don't have a lot of maneuvers to do that, especially when mm. you have a rock in your way. However, it yeah. looks like you might be able to pull it off with your bank. Yeah. So I was looking at it, I was like, I need to do a two. A three will land me right on that rock. Two actually ends up being, well, it's right over the base. So a very slight readjustment, and it functionally doesn't move anywhere. But with the turret, range 1 to 3 turret, or range 2 to 3 turret, not that worried about it. And I'm, we both kind of allowed me to do this. Uh, I, with Matt having initiative, he should be moving uh, Asajj first. Mm. However, I decided to move my arc first, and yeah. we were totally okay with this. Yeah, we realized, like, oh, wait a minute, Asajj is supposed to move first. We'll end up doing a maneuver and kind of proxying where the arc would have been, it ends up not making any difference at all. Oh. And we had, last turn, again, I had rotated... Uh, and so last turn, I couldn't actually rotate the mobile fire because I only did the two maneuver. It's still... It's in the right spot. It's where I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Just continuing that sideways strafe and here. So just checking to make sure that this could have been legal. Yeah, that, I was, that you wouldn't have bumped me or anything like that, but both of us were trying to get out of... You're mm -hmm. trying to chase me, and I'm trying to get out of dodge. Yeah. And so, again, it's a three maneuver, sheds the stress, and I'm trying to give you a target lock on my own ship. A little bit backwards there, but that's all right. I'm, I, you, you want to give me a target lock on my own ship? I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. And again, so just continuing to uh, to push for the focus... And it, it is one, it is a, a bit of a dance with, with the Shadowcaster. If you do decide to put push the limit on it, is do you push every turn? You know, some turns you might not want to. Usually you're pretty safe with, with this ship, but sometimes you'll get into spots where eh, threes aren't the best maneuver. So here I am going with Nora, and I am just trying to make use of that back arc right now, mm -hmm. but unfortunately... I was thinking about doing a 4K turn to get myself, uh, yeah, 4K turn to get myself turned around, 
Instead, I opted to do a three... It's a three hard turn. Hard turn, which is actually stressful for me. So... I wasn't exactly sure where you're going with the Z95, and I wanted to be completely clearer from you. Mm -hmm. And this puts me in a, a, a nice spot for later turns. Still not exactly oppor opportune, because I've had a couple of turns now where not with, when some of my fighters are not shooting, which yeah. is not really good for me. No, I and... really want to have you firing with these ships every turn, because I only have three of them. Mm -hmm. And it's very reminiscent of the older waves in the sense that I only have like three or four attack dice. I have a lot of synergy going on, but I need you to really land those hits. Yeah, and so there is Asajj opening up, assigning her stress at the start of the combat, getting a point of getting a couple points of damage through, putting the tractor beam token, and here I elect not to not actually move uh move Shara's ship because it, there's not really any position I want it to go in. Yeah, no, it's in a really good spot. So I can either boost one straight forward or make the ship perform a barrel roll. Neither of those actions are really a, really ideal for me right now. So Shara will take her shot back into Asajj. Doesn't care, she manages to evade them. And we do have range 3 from the, uh, the TLT. And here is uh, something where well, any of these one agility ships are really going to suffer against tractor beams. Is As long as I land at least a hit with uh, the TLT, it'll do a point of damage because... She doesn't have any defense dice anymore. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is that with the, those tractor beams and with all of the abilities that you have, all of that internal synergy with Ketsu, mm -hmm. you, you can get multiple tractor beams on the, on a ship. Yeah. And doing that, you could reduce even a, a defense dice of a TIE fighter to something with it where it'd be like a B-Wing. Yeah. So, and then with a TLT, you can easily mop up. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of constant damage here. And I realized that my initial plan of... Going in, using the rock to my defense, and then trying to whittle you down and basically attrition you is not really going to work that, that, that well for me because the strength of my squadron is in its synergy. And if I start losing my fighters, I'm going to start losing that synergy, mm -hmm. especially if I lose Bay. If I lose Bay, it's going to be very difficult for Nora to continue the continue the fight, as it were, yeah. and Kyle Katarn's good, but because you got that stress going on me, it's, or you have the ability to put stress on me, and I'm stressing <coughs> myself out, mm -hmm. it could easily add to a, 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 an uphill battle for me, so... Oh, for sure. I'm kind of thinking to myself, hmm, I should have gone after Asajj right away. Yeah. Should have just gunned her down, killed everything in, in my way, and, and you played this fairly well in the ability to keep that her away from me until it was convenient for you. So mm -hmm. I need to work against that now. <laughs> I need to I need to figure out how I can to to win this and I think right now I need to get myself turned around. Mm -hmm. And we saw the again that pirate just gunning in there trying to uh put the slicer tool damage onto onto Shara. Rolled the blank so no damage there, but she's still stressed so I'll take it. Yeah. And again just keeping that persistent uh, persistent target lock. And because it performed a three maneuver last turn, that mobile firing arc is looking directly ahead. And that's, quite honestly, that's exactly where I want that to be this turn. Oh yes, for sure. And so I actually push to uh, focus and evade, because Asajj still has her target lock on uh, Shara from last turn. And it, that's, again, another thing that caught me by surprise is a ship that big, it's kind of like the Ghost. It has an evade action as well, which is a little strange to think of. It's like, all right, you know what? Let's uh, up those two defense dice to a little more than you would otherwise think. So here I am, <laughs> hopping, my, uh, hopping my pirate. Blazing past him. Really want to get some distance, but also get some shots in. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to get blocked by that, that headhunter, and I think that's where you were going to go. So I was able to nimbly dodge, and yep. now I have to make sure that I don't block my own my own ship with my own ship. Yeah, you you really don't want uh, Nora to be to be losing actions at this point. No, I think one of the one of the things that I'm used to when it comes to playing rebels a little bit is, especially with Bigs, is that you have to keep your ships within range one. Mm -hmm. Now it's really important to note that Shara Bay 
her abilities range one to two. You have a, a fair distance mm-hmm. before, you know, you have to worry about not getting that target lock in. Yeah. And considering the maneuver dials of the ARC-170, you, you have a bit of, of flexibility with that. Definitely, yeah. I really like that the ARC-170 has, like, six greens, and they're all, like, one to twos, banks and forwards. It is a little tricky when you're used to flying something <laughs> like a... I don't know, a TIE, a tie fighter or a TIE interceptor or the Inquisitor. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's, again, one, this is a ship that you really, really don't want to chase. No. Especially with, it's got a free title. And, you know, sitting here thinking about it, I was like, well, why, why are they giving this free title? You're always going to take it. And I was like, oh, well, it's, you know, you can't always give those special rules to pilots. So yeah. give it a free title, make it look neat and... Yeah, the ship's always going to take it fine. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's to show, hey, this ship has special rules, and, and, and these are the rules that are mm-hmm. accompanying it. And they're not tied to any particular pilot. Yeah. All right, and so, you see Kyle Katarn getting work there. Nora is double-focused. She's got a target lock, and she's looking straight down at... Uh, let's actually have my little little pirate there. I think he's kind of quaking in his boots right now. He's got, uh, he's taken a shield at some point here. He's got one shield left and two hull. But this uh, may end up being in range one of the rear of an ARC-170. <laughs> That's not really where you want to be. Uh, especially with Nora. Like, Nora is, Nora's damage output is absolutely impressive. Mm-hmm. If you can get it to work for you. especially or And defensively, too, because of, of her ability. Mm-hmm. So, you can have... A range one in the front arc, mind you, you can have a range one, three attack dice, go into four attack dice because range one, mm-hmm. and then spend a target lock that gives you an extra focus, and then you can just manipulate your dice even more. So you're basically getting five attack dice in uh, on a forward <laughs> shot. That is absolutely from a rid- two base attack dice ship. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and so here we see the back arc. So was in range of the back, range one of the back. So the three attack dice. We have two hits landing. Adding the focus, uh, spending the target lock to add the focus token, or the focus result. And this uh, could, this could very well spell the end of my ship here. I hope so. And just kind of clarifying exactly what the wording on Nora's uh, pilot ability was. It, it's a new concept, it's quite neat. Uh, does take some getting used to to really see the full applications of it, but... Well, I noticed that you get... A lot of these newer ships have, especially the Rebels, have the, I have an ability on attack and defense. Mm-hmm. So you have, for instance, Miranda from the K-Wing that was, I can do this, that's a, a, a positive offensive action, or I can do this, which is a positive defensive action. Yeah. So you really have that duality. And the ever-present Poe. His, his pilot ability working on both. Yes, exactly. So you're see, I think you're seeing a lot more attack and defense, more of a balance mm-hmm. where, you know, something like the Empire is, I, I, want, I want to go and punch him in the face. Yeah. And so it ended up being my head under, rolled reasonably well, used his focus, and ends up only taking the one, uh, one point of damage. But he's still, still down to one. And so we... Uh, like, oh, nope, Nora, or Shara doesn't actually die just yet. Because she was killed by Asajj, she'll get her, uh, Simu- her shot. Simultaneous fire. Mm-hmm. And I use the, trying to save my pirate here, use the target, or the tractor beam to shunt her forward out of range one. Let's see if I can keep him alive. This is a, uh, it's a bit of a daunting prospect, actually. But there is the, the tail gunner kicking in two hits. Now we do save one, but it's a crit that goes through, and, well, there he goes. <laughs> the weakness of two hull ships. He explodes from a direct hit. But that, that's it's what, a pirate. I'm not that bothered. That, that's what you get for having pirates in your squadron. Exactly. So he, uh, alas, he does not get to shoot. And my, uh, let's see if my syndicate thug is in range. It looks like he is. So we'll be taking some some uh, long range shots into uh, into Nora here through the asteroids. So two defense dice. 
don't get the additional defense dice because it is a secondary weapon system. Yep, it is a turret. And spend the focus to just confirm a hit through. I lose my last shield. No, nope. no, nope, you lose the first one. So they haven't actually really shot at Nora yet this game. There's been, well, other targets of opportunity. And then Biggs, well, you kind of have to deal with him. But... Yeah. And, then... and I think it's important with, with Rebels, that, and this is why I think Biggs is such a key player, mm -hmm. is because it forces a sort of order of operation of how you have to deal with the Rebel Squadron. And as long as you have that backload of damage, being able to catch up before they deal with Biggs, you're in the green. Mm -hmm. But if they are able to deal with Biggs before you can do a lasting scratch, you're going to have a hard time because, with the exception of something like Poe Dameron, you have a, a really hard time with endgame fighters with rebels. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because you'd think something like the X-Wing would be in a, like, you know, from the lore or whatever, would be an amazing endgame fighter. And to be fair, the T-70 is a really good endgame fighter. It is, yeah. The attrition and durability of the ARC-170 might be able to hold me out a little bit, but I have to play very well, and mm -hmm. I have to get out of dodge. And getting out of dodge is not something that these things really excel at. Not so much. Especially when you start piling stress on me. Start piling stress, and we do have a tractor beam to, uh, to, yank, to start yanking ships around with. And that's, I think, to me, one of the most enjoyable parts of the, the Shadowcaster title is just that, yeah, I'm going to make you easier to hit. Mm -hmm. It is contingent on me hitting you, but mostly I'm going to push you around the board and get you into better positions for me. So what you're saying is that your favorite aspect about playing the squadron is being a dick. Oh, that's scum, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to make it clear. <laughs> they are scummy. And it is a Saj Ventress, so, you know. Yeah. There's really no other way. I think she would enjoy it. So putting a stress out from her pilot ability. And that's... And again, so double layering uh, onto Nora here. Since she had pushed the limit. Well, I figured that I might as well push now because I'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to get rid of the constant stress. Yeah. Here you go, pop in glitter stims. So and that's so I hadn't actually pushed the limit with Asajj. Like, okay, no, I'm going to target lock. I know I'm going to glitter stims this turn. I'm in a pretty decent spot to use it. Yeah, I'm not range one, but I'm the target you're going to be shooting at. I'll take my three attack dice. I want to make sure I land a hit. No, and it, looking at... The Lancer, being in range 1 is not necessarily where you're, you want your opponent. Not not entirely. With that mobile arc, you have to be really sure of where you're, you and they are going to land. Because so much of your ships and pilots' abilities are contingent on the enemy being inside that arc. So yeah, yes, you can use your action to mitigate an oops. But if you don't have to, hey, great. So getting some damage through onto Nora... Gonna pull her sideways, keep her a little closer to me. Uh, basically, not really give her uh, anywhere to run. And make sure I'm not within. Didn't accidentally yank her into range one of my. I was kind of. I was like, "Oh, you're gonna yank me, huh? Oh, okay. I'll, 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 I guess I'll let that happen. It's not <laughs> yeah. like I can say no." Yeah. And spend the focus. I don't actually have to spend a focus there, but lands the hit. And again, that uh, so that tractor beam dropping, uh, basically offsetting the evasion dice from the asteroid. As long as I get two hits in, Nora's taking damage. And at this point, I don't know exactly where I can go that's going to save me. And honestly, I don't really think that I can come back from this at all. But I like to see how durable the ARC-170 is. Mm-hmm. I'm also a sucker for punishment, so let's see how long it takes before the Lancer can do Nora in. Yeah. And but and just really having one thing we really notice is having that being able to pick a ship and say, no, you keep your tractor beam tokens, that's uh that's that's really it's quite a substantial advantage. And with each turn, the it's the first time per turn that you get a tractor beam token is you can move a small ship. So the fact that they have a tractor beam on them before doesn't actually preclude that. Yeah. So Saj, moving up, she's going to continue her side strafe. Wants, yeah. She arcs exactly where I want it to be. Don't really need to, uh, to push. I have my target lock already. I'm just going to focus up. 
really not worried about taking damage at this point. She's, well, the Lancer hasn't been touched yet, so. No, not, not particularly. Not for lack of trying. <laughs> no. And again, just giving Nora stress again. So we've got two. That fantastic uh, ability to go, to put damage out from the, the rear arc. And here I actually was like, you know what? I've got the health. I will take those two points of damage. I want to keep my focus for the offense. Yeah. Nora's still got four health left. Let's let's get some damage through into her. <clears throat> Spend the target lock. Keep the focus. And with the, the tractor beam, that's just... It's like shooting at Decimator. Oh, yeah. That is three damage straight through. One of being a crit. And the crit, of course, is a stun pilot. Nothing that I'm all too worried about at this point in the game. Not Not too much. And here, trying to pull her over onto the asteroid, but base wasn't quite wide enough. That's all right. Yeah, that is something that I've had to keep, now that I, as soon as I was aware of it, something that I had to really keep my eye open for is not putting myself on those asteroids. Mm -hmm. And it really kind of made me wish I took those uh, seismic torpedoes. Oh, yeah. And blew the hell out of these asteroids. Said, no, get your, your asteroids, I don't care about them anymore. They're, they're dead. Yeah. And so here we see the... Again, those that effect of the stacking uh, tractor beams is, yeah, I can shoot through the asteroid, and I don't care, because you've got a minus two penalty to your defense. You'd only ever get up to two defense dice anyway, and there is the Syndicate Thug putting the final nail in Nora's coffin. So that was incredibly brutal, Matt. Thank you for that. <laughs> I really appreciated it. But I think it really showed off the Lancer's potential. Mm -hmm. I... I feel like I played like a little bit of a like a goober there, um, but I can definitely see where I made mistakes, and I think that if I were to fight you head on, not get too caught up with your ch your chaff, and then deal with them later on in the game, mm -hmm. uh, I would have done a lot better. Uh, and I think I would like to play around with my squadron a little bit. How do you think? Uh, what do you What do you think of the Arc One Seventies? given what you've seen. Well, after really after seeing them on the board, they I did have to re revise my opinion of them. I did not think they were going to be good at all. It's like this is an old ship. You know, this the course statistics of it not great, but seeing the pilots and seeing that they really want to work with other pilots and just the you know, the amount of synergy and support that they can provide and how far above their their weight they can punch. I like them. I'm happy I got one as well. I don't know if I'd run two, but I, I do like them. And But one of the first comparisons we made is we look at it as like, this thing's huge. Hey, this is like as big as a K-Wing. Hey, this kind of plays like a K-Wing. <laughs> yeah, which makes me actually wonder if I should put some uh, Tetuju. Te 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 oh, Tukadu. Te Tukadu. <laughs> Tukadu. Put him in the squadron to like play off that focus necess necessity mm. and give me some a little bit more firepower than what B Biggs is bringing to the table. So I'm gonna have to really think about that. Yeah, could be could be interesting. Whole lot of health there. Uh, we are still working on the Wave Nine videos, so keep up with your suggestions. We're going to be picking through them. Mm -hmm. uh, put them in the comments section below or wherever else you are getting this video, and we'll be sure to check it out. And uh, I'm pretty sure that we'll be playing some of them. I, oh, yeah. I still have no idea what I want to do with the TIE SF. Uh, and I know you want to fly uh, some Concord Dawn shenanigans. Oh, but... that's, that's going to be dirty. The other thing is that we are going to be bringing out the hero... Heroes of the Resistance... And then after that, we are we got uh, we got another regionals coming up. Mm. So a really big month for us, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be neat to see you know a regionals uh, meta with all of these new Wave Nine and Heroes upgrades. Maybe we'll see a bigger Rebel showing. Well, guys, you know as always, thanks for watching Wookies on X Wing. Be sure to like and subscribe. We've got videos out every Wednesday. We are part of the Northern Gaming Network. Be sure to check it out at northerngamingnetwork.com, where we have additional content for this game and others. And aside from uh, you know, dropping us a line in the video comment, John will let you know how you can get a hold of us directly. Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Corehath. You can also find us on Twitter at NorthGameNet, or you can like us on Facebook to keep up with our most recent news. And we'll see you guys later. Have fun playing those new ships. <laughs>